Man, that's so good. Thank you, worship team. And thank you, thank you, everyone here. You know, it sounds funny maybe to say that, but did you know that even just the presence of the Lord is brought down where there's... And so the congregation, or I would just say this, the body, us together, uh, there's a significant part that each one of us play. Uh, I'm, there's chairs here. I, I, thank you for doing chairs. I like standing. I've been, I've been sitting all day. Um, we're going to sit down, but I believe tonight... Um, huh? Okay. I'm going to stand just for a moment. I want to start tonight's uh, message by first of all saying, wow, I'm so excited to just be here tonight with you guys and be here with my wife. Um, we've been gone for a little while and it's good to be home. Um, but really more than anything, we're excited about just something the Lord's been dealing with us in our hearts about. And just really, I think um, this season in which we're, we're in as, as the church, or, or I would just say this um, life, the season of life uh, that not just this body, but just this world is in, um, uh, there's, there's a timetable, if you could say a timetable of heaven. And, and how many of you know heaven has time? right now. I mean, it's watching. There, there's a timetable of this earth or of this, you know, dispensation, if you will. And, uh, and the, there's, a, there's, there's some things that God's doing right now, I believe, in the church. And I would say this, he's calling the church to attention. He's calling the church to attention. And so today is <clears throat> uh, December the 4th, which is special to me because I have a son born on this day. I know uh, I have Kylie's son is born on this day. Other people, sons, kids, whatever, might be born on this day. Hey, that's awesome. But for me, it's special because my middle child is born on this day. And so this morning, my wife got up extra early. Um, I didn't. Um, uh, and she got into the kitchen and made cinnamon rolls like a good mom and put streamers on the stairs. Um, I didn't help do that, um, but, but I didn't get included in the helping of doing that either, so it's okay. But um, so we, she got up, and, uh, and she's like, hey, you know, before Sam gets up, you know, um, hey, uh, you want to get up so you make sure you're ready for when he comes down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I get up, and as I come in, she's like, I made coffee, and so I grab a cup and, and uh, kind of coming into the day, you know. Um, but what I heard real strong in my heart was uh, that today is a special day, and just listening to what the Lord would want to say to my son. Did you know that God is always speaking? Always speaking. He always has something to say to you and something to say to others. He has something he'll speak to your heart today. His, he says that he, you can't live off yesterday's word, so that means I know that there's a, ne- a word for today. So we know that today there's a word for, for me. There's a word for you. There's a word that he'd have for me that would illuminate my path and shine ahead to where I'm going. So I, you can trust God for that, especially if you're looking, you know, for if, you're, if you have a decision to make or, or there's all kinds of things. Even if you don't even know that you have a decision to make, you're making decisions all day, and God has a word for you that would help you stay on track and, and come to the expected outcome, right? So anyway, so I'm sit, coming in, into that, and I grab this cup of coffee, and uh, I walk over to this room we have in our house of windows, and, and, uh, and Sam's still upstairs, and he's fixing to come down or out of the shower, and, uh, and I just hear the Lord say, I want you to sit with him in this room for a little bit this morning. Now, if, if you know Sam, um, he is active. He's been active since he was little, and that is probably the least favorite thing he likes doing. And I kind of am a little bit of, he might be a little chip off the block, you know, like he's got to stand, um, where she's more like, you know, and I'm like, like, you know, I always move in, you know. People thought I had to be on stuff as a kid. Might have had to be, but I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I had him sit down with me for a moment this morning, and, uh, and this is what came out of, of me, and I found that it wasn't just for him, I found that it was for me, and, I, I, and as I went through the day, I found that it is really not just for me, it's for all of us, and that even just tonight, okay? And this is what I heard, that today is a day of assignment. Today is a day of assignment, and you know, when you were born, it was a day of assignment. This is when God said, I need you. For a purpose. God breathed you before you were formed. We know this in Jeremiah. says, And this is how every one of us, before you were ever born, God formed you in your mother's womb. And, and he appointed you. 
He called you. He set you on this earth for a purpose. And how many of you know purpose is important because without purpose, there can be no progress. So in life, you will just spin your wheels and you will just be living like what, and you may have, maybe you've asked yourself this point, and I know that the world is asking themselves this point all the time right now, and this is why God's calling us to assignment to understand what is the point? Have you ever been there just like, what is the point of what I'm doing? What is the point of life? What is the point of going to church? What's the point of all this? Let me tell you, there is a point, and it starts with understanding our purpose. And so we're going to talk tonight about just the fact that we are on assignment, that there is an assignment to your life. There is an assignment when you found Christ, how, how, that it was, there was a gift given to you, and that is eternal life. It was given to you, but it wasn't just given to you. It was given to you so that you could give it away, Amen. so that you and I could give it away. And so um, we have been talking a lot. I'm going to kind of sit down now. We've been talking a lot about um, just in our just in our own time, and and it's come out a couple the last couple messages simply about contending, about being a contender, you know, like being a contender, being one that would be in the ring, and and being a contender for other people, you know, that when you see somebody hurting, that when you, you don't just say praying or and really what you mean is caring. How many of you know you can say praying? And praying really doesn't mean praying. It simply most often times just means caring. My heart goes out to you. I know, I know the feeling. Oh, feel ya, sis, bro. Can't do anything about it. If I could, I would. But just want you to know, praying, caring for you. That's about, that's about the, like, but, but, but that's not, what's the point? Like, what's the point of typing that? Because you just want them to know that you care. I mean, that's good, but, but, but doesn't that just kind of feel helpless? Like, we're not supposed to be helpless. We, we are actually supposed to contend. We're supposed to be a contending church. We're to, what does it mean to contend? You had the definition down. I, I'd love for you to read kind of that because we were talking a lot about this, but just about contending. And even this year, um, she, um writing on the whiteboard in the office for this year, just what we're going to contend for. Did you know you can fight for some things? Did you know you can fight for your, the image of you know, God's design for your family? Did you know that we are created to, to, to fight for what God designed? We're to bring back heaven. This is actually what he asked us to do, to, to bring back heaven here on this earth. This is what he said, hey, fight for this, or pray. He said, after this manner, pray, Matthew chapter 6. He says, our, our, our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom. So let's just establish this right now. Kingdom is an area of rule, right? And so that we got to understand that there are kingdoms, right? I wish we could just like do this and look into another dimension and, because you are a spirit. And not only are you a spirit, this, God is spirit. Right, and, and so and, and so so is uh, Satan. Okay, so are angels. Right, and let me tell you, angels are real, just as real as demons are real. Listen, God is real. I mean, all this it, it, you don't see it, but if you could just be caught up or to see to a different dimension, one day our eyes are going to be open. The Bible says, and we're going to see all things perfect and clear. So it's amazing. It's amazing how, how God, God he, and he tells us that we don't wrestle. There's a, there's a match going on. And here's the thing. You, if you don't know that there's a match going on, you will ask yourself, what's the point? Because you're a part of a game that you know nothing about or a contest that's going on for you and all those around you for souls Right? And not only just for souls, but also for what's been given to you. There is a contest going on, and, and there's like, I, I have this gift card, and I want to have you read that here in a moment, and we don't have like a ton of time tonight. Um, uh, but like, like, this is a Chili's gift card. I had it in my bag, and I, I think it's still good. I, I've had it in my bag for like probably six months, and I, there's three of them in there. And anyway, and I pulled it out, and I thought, you know, I should just give this away tonight. Just like, kind of like salvation, it's a good gift. This is nothing near what salvation is, it's chilies. But, 
Maybe if it was like Chick-fil-A um, or something. No, but seriously. Uh, if it, it, and so salvation is given, right? There's a gift that, that is, is so, it's wonderful, right? And so it's handed out. It's handed out. It's given away. It's like, hey, let me, let me, give, give, let me give this to you, right? And, and, I, and you, this is yours. But, but we're going to let Satan and all of his people, all of his demons, contend for what you've been given. So unless you put that away, unless you hold that truth and put it somewhere maybe in your heart, right? This is what's happening. People, the, Satan's taking it right away. What you've been given in salvation, it, 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 he's, take, he's, he's stealing, he, he's out, and, and you know, unless you put it somewhere, unless you hide and you, and you know for yourself, this is mine, like if, you, if this is just handed, I just gave it to you, if I just had it as something here and you, you picked it up, you would be like, oh, and somebody came along and snatched it away, you'd be like, oh, that must have been theirs. You know what I'm saying? But, but salvation is a gift to you, and so it, it's something that you, you make your own, and Satan's out looking to steal, kill, and destroy. He's looking to take it from you, and the full work of salvation, the full work of salvation, and this is the good news of the gospel. Let me tell you, if you don't understand, and this is, I've been asking myself, if we don't understand the good news, if we don't understand the gospel, we will ask ourselves what's the point all the time. Jesus, when, it, when, the, when, he, when the Bible says when he, the, the Spirit, when he got baptized, after being on the earth for 30 years, imagine coming from heaven, now being the Word becoming flesh, and, and, and Mary giving birth to a son, and he being filled from the, for the Spirit from day one, full of the Spirit. Can you imagine? It's what had enabled him to live a sinless life and endured and, and, and with the power, power of God on the inside to choose, to choose, to choose. How many of you know, having lived in the throne room, having lived in heaven, he knew what was right and what was wrong? For 30 years, he had to endure. Like, what an what a endurance test, just to simply endure all the that which is not supposed to be or was not by his father's design it wasn't by his father's design so this is why he said when when he, when when the holy spirit descended upon upon him not just in him but god this is when miracles started when the gift of the holy spirit was given to him guess what the gift of the holy spirit was given to guess who else the church yeah yeah but that's kind of well, what's the point? <laughs> you can go back to what's the point, or you can, and you can let the enemy take your Chili's card, and everybody else's that you would have been blessed by who you come, who you're going to take out to eat, or or you could say, you know what, this is a gift from God to me. Yeah. He must want me to have it. Yeah. Right. What's that? The good news. Mm-hmm. And he said, this is what he said. Here, the good news. I've come to you know to preach the gospel. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've come to declare. Because, and so let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. He says, the kingdom of heaven, right? He says, our Father who art in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And we got to understand that in any kingdom, nothing is done without a decree. Let's just even say here in America, you know what they're trying to do in Washington? Try to make a decree and write it into law. In other words, something is said and written and therefore enforced. If it's not decreed, it's not happening, folks. Four years can go by. Eight years can go by. And it doesn't matter. If they didn't get it written, if they didn't get it decreed, if they didn't get it posted on the wall that this is now a law, guess what? It doesn't matter. Nothing happened. There was no change. There was no impact. Well, that's... God understands this, and from the very beginning, the way that something's going to happen, just when there, when there is nothing, what do you do? You speak. Like, without a decree, nothing happens in any kingdom. And so Jesus said, hey, he's making a decree. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, or here's how I know, it's not just in me anymore, because I'm able to preach recovery sight to the blind. I'm able to 
set the captive free. I'm able to, to declare that this is the year of the Lord, I'm to, to heal the broken heart. I know that's not all in order, but this is, is, is Luke chapter 4. It's just all about God coming and being upon him. And listen, this is what he came to dwell not only in you, but for you to, this is the difference about everything. About the, the, we, this is, he says he came to live in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Have you heard this scripture before? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let me pull, pull it up. and go ahead and read on contending, and we're going we're gonna to hit on that, and we'll pick up. Um, so contend, um, it says to contest uh, rivalry against difficulties, to strive, um, maintain or as- assert, um, and then another word is just contest. And so I told him, I think of just... Um, Contend is a very, like, I've said this numerous times from here, but I'm a very competitive person, so I relate well with this word. But just something that is like, I mean, if a Chili's gift card, okay, it's 25 bucks. But if if that was like something to you that was worth it, more than a Chili's gift card, um, and someone try, I mean, think of your child. Think of, think of something that's so precious to you, and someone would come to try to take it. You would contend for that. What does that mean? You would do whatever it takes to hold to it. Yep. And um, now in, in the world we live in, not just in the world, but see, if, if we're not um, having our minds renewed to the word, then what we see is what the world believes, what the world wants to begin, or we could say Satan and his kingdom, to begin to in, get in, into the church. So what do you see? Now the church isn't operating necessarily a lot from the standard of the word. It's more here up. Mm -hmm. So instead of of contending with the word, how do you fight? How do we contend? We're going to get to that, but you you contend with the word. In other words, you fight the enemy with the word, where the enemy would like us to contend with the word. In other words, if I was God, I wouldn't do it that way. If I was God, I would do, you, we don't say if I was God, we just go, well, I just don't really think that that's what he means, and, and you're not really willing to, to look, and so, or, or really to, to decide, and here, you're beginning to decide from here up, yeah. right? How many of you have ever been there? You're like, how can that really be? How can that really be? And here's the thing, you cannot bring what heaven designed, or you cannot bring a kingdom that you're not surrendered to. You can't bring a kingdom that you're not fully surrendered to. So even what you are here for, your purpose, is going to be very frustrated if you've been brought brought and translated out of this kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Your purpose for what you've been created as a soldier, the Bible tells us, hey, as a good soldier, first or. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy rather, 2, 1 through 4, talks about how a good soldier is to, to that, that's you and me. We're to be like soldiers. There's a, a commission. There is an assignment. But I'll just be in a kingdom with nothing to do but be engaged in all of that which is civilian life. And I'll be in a place where I'll often let the enemy run amok in my life. No, no, no. I'll, have, I'll, just be, I'll just be fair game for the enemy with no purpose. What's the point? I'm just here. No, you have a purpose. You have a purpose, but you're ever going to get into that purpose. You're going to have to be fully surrendered to the kingdom that you're a part of. You will never even desire to fully, or, or and I'd say desire. I use that word loosely, but I would say, Desire as in, oh, I'm good. I want it, right? You won't be willing to contend for that which you're not fully mm-hmm. surrendered or in agreement with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll just let it go. Yeah. You'll just let that go. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me just go there real quick. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, I want, I want you to see this because this is a call of an assignment to you and I think that there's something that, uh, that is just, just so good in this portion of Scripture because I'm really want, wanting to appeal to you um, and I want to go 1, 1 through 4. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, it says this. It says, uh, you then, my son, be strong in the grace of... In the grace, we, we hear about grace, God's unmerited 
favor, right, that's in Christ Jesus, all the favor that's been bestowed upon you. Be strong in the grace. I wish we would be strong in the grace as God's unmerited favor as it, it pertains to more than just freedom from sin. I wish we would be strong in the grace. Here's what I know. If, if there's a, a declaration to a young man in the faith, okay, hey, be strong in the grace, that's in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace, that which was given through Christ. How do we know what's given through Christ? Well, we find out what he says was given. It's the gospel. It's the good news. So let's be strong on that. I, I challenge you to contend for the grace that was given to you, right? Because because if I contend for it in his mind, I can only give to another what I own. So if I'm not strong in the grace that was given to me, let me tell you, your purpose for which you were created will be frustrated just by not being strong in the grace. You will just be going through the motions, right? You'll be just going through the motions. So he says, be strong in this grace, my son. He goes on to the next verse. And he says, And the things you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, he says, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. This is powerful. It's like, hey, it's not just you. Like, you be strong, and then go find somebody else and, and, and teach them Right? So this is discipleship. This is like going to all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. So this is, hey, purpose. Purpose is happening right here, right before our very eyes. He says, hey, find some other men. Find some other, those, those faithful men is what it says. I'll go back one verse, sorry. And this is NIV. If it was King James, it would just say, find many, uh, if you heard me uh, Say in the presence of any witnesses and trust to reliable people or faithful people or faithful men and women who will also be qualified to teach others. Next verse. Join with me. <laughs> wow, this is a big one. Join with me in suffering. Join with me in hardships. Join with me, here let me just say, in contending. This is what it, did you know to contend you ever play King on the Hill? Anybody, like, growing up, we had snow hills all the time in Minnesota. And in the parking lots, it was the best place to play because they got really big. And, and then when you, if you stayed on the top of the hill, it really hurt, either really hurt or it really hurt somebody else. So it's kind of like one of those things. It's just so fun to play, though. You push them down, or if there's a construction site and there's a big dirt mound, you play King of the Hill. But if it's worth staying, let me tell you, if it's worth it, it's going to take you contending, right? Like the best victories are not like, yeah, we beat them like 115 to 2. Like nobody's watching. And you don't really care if you started, played, or whatever. You, you know, you, you, but, but the game that, that went down to the wire and the big play, right? That's the game that you, you, you celebrate. That's the game worth being at. That's the game that when it's about to happen, people are coming to. Right? That's, the, that's, what, that's what he's saying here. Hey, listen, be willing to contend with me. Well, why am I going to have to endure, endure suffering? Because I'm, I'm a contender. I don't want to contend. Well, well, guess what happens when you lift weights? If you don't ever lift anything heavier, you're not going to grow. You're not going to build. Right? So he says, Enjoy, join with me like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Like he's calling us a soldier. I think it's really interesting that that, that, is, that is really what I am. That's what you are. I mean, he gave us armor. Didn't he tell us that in Ephesians chapter 6? Why do you need armor if you're not enlisted? Like there's a song we used to sing, and I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in, right? But, I, but I'm in the Lord's army. That's something that is so simple. And it's like Landon was saying tonight, with how we so often forget the just simple truth of what we, what we read and what we believe. And we, the question is, we often hold so loosely to what we believe that we're not strong. There's not a grip on what you've been given. 
you got to get a grip. I got to get a grip on what I've been given. So you, I, I got to get a grip because, because there's a battle for what I've been given. And I've been given some armor. I've been given these things. And he goes on to say this. I want to go to the, all the way through verse 4 here. He says, No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tie, uh, tries to please the commanding officer. That right there, you're, the fact of this, today's a day of assignment. Every day is a day of assignment. And you know you have a, a job. And, it's, and, and if, if you will say, what's the point? If you get involved as, when your purpose is to be a soldier, you will have no direction other than what you, your calendar tells you or all these, you won't have a, a higher, you won't have a purpose. Not a God-given purpose, not one that brings fulfillment, right? Unless you understand you, we become fully surrendered to what God has said, what kingdom I'm a part of. So our Father, what are we contending for? We're contending for his kingdom. That's what I was created for, to contend for his kingdom. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I want to just take a moment, and, and I, we're going to talk about the best way to contend. The best way to contend, and, and you can put, get Timothy ready there. Um, and, and we have a, just a couple words we wanted to share, which talks about, my, he, Paul talks to Timothy. He says, hey, I, I want you to contend with these words I've given to you. And it's important to know that my contending is always going to be with the word. In other words, I'm going to always use the word. My contending might be, hey, and I don't have time to turn to all these scriptures, but it might be like an exodus, only be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Where did that come from? How did he know to be still? Because your fight will always be the fight of faith. The fight of faith can only be that which is found from hearing God's word because faith comes Right? Romans tells us this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So my fight is always the fight of faith. This is the victory that overcomes. He even gives us the victory, even my faith. 1 John 5, right? 5-4, I think it is. It says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. So the fight, the fight that I fight is always the fight of faith. And if I'm going to know how to fight when it comes to my health, if I'm going to know how to fight when it comes to my children, if I'm going to know how to fight when it comes to my coworker, and if I'm going to ha know how to fight when it comes to my own addiction, if I'm going to know how to, because listen, you're to be fighting. We're to be fighting. Then I'm going to have to know how to fight, and I'm going to have to know what to fight with. It's always going to be with the, with the very thing that will bring me victory. What br doesn't bring me victory is trying hard. This is the victory that overcomes the world, 1 John 5, 4. Even our faith, right? So faith is what? When God speaks to you, you need God's word to know how to fight. Because there's some fights, you just need to sit still. And you need to be patient, and you need to stay in the, you need to stand, you need to stand there, storm coming, storm comes, storm goes, you don't move. ha <laughs> ha or you could get all, ah! but no, you, storm came, storm went. Hey, in this world, there's going to be trials and troubles, but be of good cheer. I'm going to give you everything you need to overcome. So you can stand. Say, what? How, in the, how in the world? Well, it's the fight of faith. But if you don't hear what God has to say, you're never going to be able to fight for your wife. You're never going to be able to fight for your children. You're never going to be able to fight. You've got to fight with, the, with faith. So the fight of faith, but in order to do that, you might you got to hear what God has to say. He said, hey, just wait. And this is why it's so important. This is why Satan wants to steal your word that you need today, that you need today, that you need today. Because if he takes the only thing that will bring victory in your life, well, then you're just kind of a sitting duck. You just hope that he doesn't get in over here and hope that he doesn't get in over here. But he's working, just so you know. It's not to be afraid, but just so you be un understanding. Be, be sober, he says. Be vigilant because your enemy. Just be aware that he's working. And, and, and so he might tell you that uh, to, to, um, he says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Or 2 Corinthians tells us that, that we tear down strongholds. Like sometimes you're to be tearing some stuff down. Sometimes you're to bind 
And sometimes you're to loose. Well, how do you know? How do you, I mean, like, you just, you, you get in your heart. Because, see, when God speaks to you, you speak, you'll get it right here. Right here. Not here. Right here. Same place he speaks to you, same thing that we, you're in, in worship or you're reading the word and pastor's not saying something, but you hear, you're hearing it here. Or you're reading the word and you're like, oh, that just, it just he just hits you right where you, where you need to be. That's him speaking. And so that's the, that's the sword that you have to fight with. That's the advancement. That's the confidence that you have, right? Because he's given you what you need. Matter of fact, he says that there is something that he swears by himself, right? And he's made an oath. Right, that this is in Hebrews. You have that po- Hebrews, I think, uh, six. Is it? Yeah, he swears by himself. Check this out. Read this verse. Um, yeah, Hebrews six, um, eighteen and nineteen. I don't have it um, written down. It says, "God did this so that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled." To take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Okay, so there's a, there's a hope. Here, this verse, is, it's like, okay, this is such a wordy verse. Help me out. Help me understand this. Like, what did he want to buy these two things? He simply, God can't lie, and he took an oath. Mm-hmm. God can't lie, and he took an oath. Like, he's, let me say this. I swear on my life on everything that I am. The creator of the universe swore on his life. The one that holds everything in balance swore on his own life. In other words, everything's fallen if he's gone. He, so he said there's two things. I, I'm, I, don't, I, I can't lie, but I'm gonna swear on my life as well so that you would know that you would know what? That there is a picture. Let's go back one verse, verse 18. And Paul, who, have, who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. So uh, go to the next verse. We, we have this hope as an anchor. So there's a hope or a picture that's given to you. Okay, this is talk about hope. What's hope? Hope is simply, uh, let me pause for a moment and slow down and kind of catch you up on this, this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. It tells us this. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, right? So the greatest would be love, right? And so it kind of would be filtered down. So love speaks the words, faith, that paint the picture, hope, for what he designed for you. Love, the greatest, speaks the words, Faith, substance, that paints the picture, hope, of the future that he designed for me. So when God speaks to you, he'll give you a word for the battle you're in, and it will paint a picture of a future that he designed for you and prepared for you because he loves you. God does that for me. And... The word that love speaks, substance, faith, that paints the picture, hope, that I can hold on to, he, this picture is not a false picture. This picture, hope, is light. I could put it this way. Hope is like God takes a snapshot with a flash in a dark room of the future that he prepared for you because he loves you, and he said, see Like your tomorrow that he prepared for you, hope is God saying, into the future, look into, look into your tomorrow and the future that you have, that he has in store for you, that he designed for you, and you can't see into the darkness, but with that flash, he takes a picture and he says, look, and he speaks it to your heart and you see into the future that which he's prepared for you. He can't take a picture of something that he hasn't already done. That's, that to me, that's powerful to think my God has already went ahead of me and he can't lie and I can anchor myself in the fact that he can't lie and this picture that he created, a hope for my soul, right? Yeah. I can hold on to that picture of what he's created for me and I don't have to move. So when the storm comes, I can stand there. The Bible tells us that, hey, when, when, when you've done all the stands, stand there for 
And having done all to stand, he said, this is Ephesians. What are you needing to stand for? Stand there. And then there's another scripture that talks about how you'll be perfect, entire, lacking, nothing. He says, when you, don't grow tired in, in doing good. Don't grow tired, but, but, but stand there have, in due season and you will reap the reward. There's, there's something about being able to stay in that place or what? Contend. Maybe some of you bowed out and you thought it was a fight, but let me just tell you, I'm here to tell you that was just a round. That was just a round. So get back in the ring because you got one in your corner and you're not fighting by yourself. Because thanks be to God who always causes triumph. We are more than conquerors through him. Hey, listen, listen. You got the one in your corner. And he's, and you fight with him. So get back in the fight if you feel like you've lost. Listen, don't chalk it up as an L. Because he didn't. Hold on to hope. I just lost hope. Get it back. Go get it back. Go get hope back. I just don't understand how to get hope back. Hear what he has to say. Go get hope back. Go get hope back. Why do you need to go get hope back? Because you got to have hope because hope is part of you being strong in the grace that you could entrust to somebody else and you would realize there is a point and there is a battle that you're to contend for. But how do I fight? How do I fight? I fight with the word. Timothy tells us this in 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy 118. Yeah, and um, the word, you know, we're going to talk here for just a second about, um, like he said, prophecies. And sometimes when we hear that word, we think, oh, well, I haven't had someone come up to me and say this long prophetic word. Um, we've had words over this body, which that you can take for yourself and say, that's for me. But you know what the amazing thing is? When you get into the word, when, when you're in a battle or when you're not in a battle, when you get into the word, his own word will prophesy to you. God speaks. What does it say? It's alive. It's full of power. That means when I'm, when I'm, the Holy Spirit is never like off duty. <laughs> never. It, it's Good. never like you come to the word and, and the Holy Spirit's like, mm, sorry, don't have one for you today. Check back tomorrow. Every time you are in the word, it is prophesying your future. It's painting a picture, which is why the word has, we have to have the word. It's what, it, it's what's the source. It's what's faith. It's what paints the picture. It's what's hope. And so that word, um, but as we were talking today and I just said, when I think of uh, contending and then this verse came to me with uh, Paul with Timothy and one of the main ways that we fight is through prophecy, through words that have been spoken. Bill Johnson, I'm going to butcher it. He is so eloquent with how he says stuff. But we were listening to a, a podcast or a sermon or something just a few days ago. But he said, when, um, when prophecies are given, which simply is just what God is saying. We like to complicate it. We like to think the only people that can prophesy is someone who's on stage, who's dressed real nice, and who, no. This is just simply, I can go up to Mona, being led of the Spirit, and say something simple, one word. <laughs> and you, you know what that, that, you've heard. that I've heard, from, that I've heard from the Spirit, go say this to Mona. And you know what, that, that is a prophetic, that is God to her. You're giving breath or words, or substance to paint a picture that might just be the very thing that is the anchor for the fight that day, yeah. or tomorrow, yeah. or the next day. And God does that with us and to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. He does it when the word of God, Hebrews 4.12, tells us that it speaks. This is why. It actually, and you want to finish saying that statement? About how it's a picture. Yeah, so he just said it uh, any time that prophecy is given or simply what God is saying at that moment, he's actually, God is actually, because what, what do we know? From the time way back all the way through to eternity, he knows you from beginning to end, start to finish, your exact purpose. He's already laid, it's done, laid out there. 
So he said it's, it's like God going like that picture, but that snapshot, and he's actually reaching out into your future. This isn't just like a facade, like this fake, ooh, spiritual thing. God is really going out into your future, the real plan that he designed, that for he you. designed and made for you. Yep. And it's like he's taking a very real picture. When you take a picture, what is it? You're capturing a real moment. Something real. We just went snowboarding. We took a picture of us in the snow. It wasn't like a fake thing. It was a real moment, really, that happened. That what? Now I have that picture to remind me of what happened. So what is it? It's God taking a real thing and saying, Mona, this is your destiny. This is your future. Okay, I'm going to pull that, and here you go. It's a real design. It's a for real your, thing. Your, your future that he says, I've made for you. This is what I've designed for you. You can have it, just like I gave that Chili's card. You can have it, but Satan wants it. Contend for it. And he, he, it's not like a um, carrot either. It's not like God takes it the and promise. then does this. He can't lie. It, it, it's like a real deal. He's not teasing us with it. <laughs> you know, it's not, sometimes we can look at those pictures or those words and be like, oh, if one day, as a fantasy. Or, or like it's some, it's too big or, it, or, it, or it's fake, but it, it's a real thing of him painting that picture to you for, for you to do what? Contend for it and say, you know what? That's mine. Yeah. Hope is not a wish. Oh, I hope so. No, you're wishing. Hope's not a wish. Hope is actually a picture that God took of your tomorrow and gave to you so that you could be there for what he designed instead of letting the enemy take you out of the place that he, the Bible says, before you were ever born, he prepared good things in advance for you to walk in. The question is, am I going to stay on the path or am I going to just be about civilian affairs, mm -hmm. right? Because how many of you know what he's, he's, he's planned Purpose, he's also equipped, right? So the provision is at that spot. At, you're going to rendezvous at 0900 hours with so da, 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 and that's where you're going to find your gear. That's where you're going to find your stuff. That's where you're going to find, as you seek first my kingdom, Matthew 6.33, all those things are going to be added to you. The provision, all the things that make your heart, oh, so bless you, right? That actually bring fulfillment. He said, I got that. He said, we were talking about this, about lilies of the field. And how he said, hey, study the lilies of the field. Read that verse. Read, no, don't read it right now, but I'm saying, go read Matthew chapter 6. And he says, consider. Like, I mean, I don't know, consider. How do you consider? Think about the lilies of the field. Like how, how, they, how they think about it. Sometimes we're thinking about everything but what God told us to think about. And how yet, yet, how that they're here today and gone tomorrow. Yet Solomon in all of his splendor was not arrayed like one of these. Think about that. Think about how God is creating and providing and, 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 and either not looking from the outside to get fulfilled. It's from the inside out. It's God. It's God. I want that to be my testimony. I want that to be, it's God. And when someone comes to me and, and I can carry this, I'm strong in this grace, that it's God. It's his unmerited favor. How, how, well, that's impossible. No, not with God. Not with God. So when you see you fight for the kingdom, you fight, you contend for the kingdom. Well, how do you know what the kingdom is? You know what the kingdom is because the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And this love, it speaks. And it, when it speaks, when he speaks to you, when he speaks to you, and this is how we got to know, this is why you need to know the word too. Because the Bible says in this world there's many voices, none of them without significance. In other words, there's, there's a word that would come to you, wouldn't be come to your heart because Satan can't do that, okay? He'll speak to your mind, okay? But, but you got to know the difference. You got to know and recognize your father's voice, right? And, and entertain him, Right? Now entertain the enemy, and guess what? You, you'll, you'll be in the right place. Go ahead and finish up because we're, gonna, we're out of time. Well, we already are out of time. Um, okay, I'm going to read this verse. Um, it's uh, 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19. This is Paul talking. He said, so Timothy, my son, I am entrusting you with this responsibility, and I love that. This isn't just like this is a responsibility. In keeping with 
the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry in keeping with the prophecies spoken over you. With this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. And then it says, For there are many who reject these virtues and are now destitute of the true faith. And then he lists the, the two guys there who have fallen away. And, um, or a fall, it says shipwrecked. Yeah, or shipwrecked, other translation. Yeah. You can fall short or you can not arrive. So like a shipwreck would be like you're supposed to go to here. A shipwreck means you stop short. You didn't get to where God designed you to be. And that's simply by what? By letting go. Yeah. By letting go of the words. And so we were just um, talking, not not only words to this house, which we don't have uh, time to go over. Uh, maybe I can share them or something. But um, specific words to this house. But there's stuff, there's specific words to you that you've had, whether it be in your own time with the Lord or someone that said something to you. You know, I've had people say stuff to me. I had stuff last night in prayer. You know what it was to me? God's prophetic word to me. So you know what I did? I wrote those down. And, and you know what then? When I go and look at those, it, it keeps speaking. Mm-hmm. What is it doing? It, it's keeping on creating that hope. It's keeping on painting that picture. And you know what? The enemy would want to come with pictures. But you know what? When I have those words, you know what all I have to do? Pull out the word. Pull out the word that he gave me. Why did he give it to me? Because he knew I needed it. He always gives you words on time. So if, if you're in a battle, if you're whatever, you're contending for something, he's always coming to give you those words to keep you going. Yep. You know, the only time that we drop out or lose, like he said, maybe lose a round, <laughs> is when we let go of that. When, when we give more attention to what, what the enemy's saying or what people are saying or instead of what, what has God said. Mm-hmm. What is his, because that's how I wage. That's how I contend for what yeah. he's promised. And, and, and I, uh, I know where, where, where time is at, and I get that, but I believe this is valuable to you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be, still be here. Um, but even in your fighting, there's, so you're, you're, you're to contend. You're to be a contender. You're to contend with the word that God's given you. You're to contend with his promise and hold to that picture of hope. But oh, something that came out so so awesome during prayer last night. We had corporate prayer here. Uh, first Tuesday of every month we have uh, corporate prayer, but um, just so many times there's a couple things, and there's more than that, but there's two main things that would keep us from fighting. And so one of them would be a lot of times we don't fight for others, right, when, when there's strife and discord. And not only do we not fight for them because we're, we're, we're against them, there's a strife, there's a, ah, but we also let the enemy have full reign, so the enemy gets to come in and work just simply like like at your marriage. Don't go de- you ever heard that? Don't go down, don't let the sun go down with on your anger towards them, on your strife. Why? Because that's where the enemy gets in and works. There's every evil work. To what? To plant, to 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 to, to steal. Don't go, don't let that happen. Don't do it. Just he says it's a command. Do thou shall not. Didn't need to be said that way here. I'll say it. Thou shall not. That's what he's saying. He's saying, hey, don't let the sun go down. Why? Because the enemy is going to be able to work. You're, and, and so, so many times, strife and offense keeps us con- for, from contending for one another, for our families, for all these things, for others, in the, because we, we think we're against them. We, we stand against other people. We're striving who's right. Like, we're not even talking about being offended. We're just talking about striving. Well, do they think they're right in the church, or do they think they're right? Well, they believe this, and they're not right. Are you kidding me? How about you contend for them? Right? Well, you won't ever be able to as long as strife's present. So you won't contend for, right? And you'll let also open the enemy up to work. But the other thing is this, and I, I thought it was so good, and it was so, spoke so strong last night. They came out, uh, and <clears throat> to long story short, we were just like encouraging one another, or just, got, it was really cool. I don't know how to explain it. But um, we were just sharing things that were on, that the Lord had spoke, and Landon said, there's another thing that'll keep you from contending for yourself. And there's a lot of us in here, there's a, and I say, we need to be contending for ourselves, But we don't contend for ourselves because of guilt and shame. You stop contending because of what you didn't do. Or let me say this, because of what you did do. 
And this is also why the attack on your purity, on your purity is so, and on the purity of the church, and not just the church, of of people's uh, sexuality is so intense right now. Because, because the Bible says when you sin against, when you do commit sexual sins, it's a sin against your own being. Here's the deal. I could commit a sexual sin. I could go do something that would, would be so wrong in my heart that I know that is not right and not pure. Nobody would know about it. And I could, I could uh, tell, like, act like nothing ever happened. But my own heart, the Bible would say, would condemn me. And where my heart condemns me, I have no confidence before God. My own heart condemns me, even though everything looks good. And so as long as I have no confidence, I will not contend. I will not. I just got hit so hard. I don't want to go another round. I have no confidence. So how do you do? What do you do? If you've missed it, let me hear 1 John 1, 9. If you've missed it, let me just tell you, just say, God, just come and say, God, just come running to him. Come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. Listen, because you're not to fight it alone, but you got to remember that he's welcoming you with open arms. He he didn't say, "Uh, go come and confess yourself to that person, and when you're clean enough, you can come to me. He says, come, come. And don't let guilt, well, if I wouldn't have been upset, if we wouldn't have been in a fight. Like, have you ever been in a fight with somebody and then something bad happens? Like, you're, maybe it's just, maybe this has happened. We're in a fight, like, we got in a fight and, and I hit the garage door because I'm like, I'm going to open the garage door for her and show her, you know, that, and that sounds really, like, I'm going to open it for you. Like, well, she's like, I'm going to open it for myself. And she's driving in. And she closed the garage door after I had opened the garage door. And it slammed on the top of her car. This was years ago. Like a real story. It was. <laughs> and it ripped the garage door off. Right? But how many of you know there's things that could actually cause guilt? Like, maybe something would happen with your child. Or something would happen with whatever. And you know... And the enemy's so good at telling you, hey, if you wouldn't have done that, how about this? If you wouldn't have slept around when you were a kid, you're, if you wouldn't have been a, into porn, if you wouldn't have blah, 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 your kids wouldn't now. So guess what? You don't, you can't even contend for what's rightfully yours and God gave to you and you're guilty. And so you just say, okay, come and have your way. Have your way, devil, because I am guilty. It happens all the time. All the time. No more. No more. Get your hope back. Get your picture back of what God said for you. Go back and contend for the, for the, the grace that he's given you. The grace that he's given you. His unmerited, unearned favor that he's given to you. This is healing. This is hope. This is restoration. This is deliverance from debt. The year of the Lord. Go read Luke. I know I'm intense, but I'm just saying, guys, there's a purpose for why we're here. We got something to contend against, and it's not against flesh and blood. And you're saying, wow, that's pretty radical. I'm saying, did you read what you said signed up for? Did you read what you signed up for? That I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus says, Lord, the Son of God was made flesh, came and dwelt among us, died and rose again. And that I, because of his payment for my sins, I'm going to spend eternity, like forever and ever, like we're not going to sleep in heaven? Yeah, that's what you said. What, is that what you said here? No, that's what you said here. Because you can't grasp it here. But some, for some reason, we're taking everything that we believed here, and now we're trying to translate it here, and we go, what's the point? What's the point? You're never going to know because the assignment started here. And this is where you surrender. you got to surrender here if you're ever going to bring what you were created to bring, and that's the kingdom, because you're a soldier and you're on assignment. And you need to start fighting. And if you feel shame and guilt for whatever's happened, just apply the blood of Jesus and plead the blood like it says in Revelation chapter 12. They overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So stand in the courtroom and you just tell them, you take the stand and say, go go ahead, accuser. Go ahead, I plead the blood of Jesus. And he paid for that. And guess what? The the, the judge, who's the judge? The king of kings and the Lord's right. He'll he'll strike that mountain and say he's he's, he's not guilty. And he'll say, throw that, throw the accuser away. 
And he said, come, come, come. And he'll put the ring on your finger and the robe on your hand. And he'll put a picture back in your heart of a promise that's true. Listen, he is the restoring God. He is the creative God. He is our God. That's grace. That's what's given to you. Fight for it. Take somebody with you. Take somebody else out to lunch and bring the good news. Bring the good news. Be a part of bringing the good news. That's your purpose. That's the point. Amen. Let's stand. Father, thank you so much for your word to us tonight. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for just the penetration within our own hearts and just the, the, the work of your spirit to bring revelation, just to open our eyes to see, uh, to see what you have called us and appointed us to be a part of. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I just ask you just to, you said that your children know your voice. And the strangers, they won't, Father. So I just thank you. Love, speak. Just speak, Father. Speak. Paint those pictures of promise. Paint the pictures of the things that you've prepared for us to walk in. We just reach out. Like I just see, see us reaching out and grabbing a hold of that and say, I can have that for my marriage. I can have that for my children. I can have that for my future. I can have that. We grab a hold of it. And we contend for our healing. We contend for the children. We contend for marriages. We contend. And if, I, if you're here tonight and you don't have something to be contending for, that you're saying, man, I'm, I'm in a battle, then I challenge you to find something to contend for. And put, the Bible says, if one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. Go contend with somebody. Go tag team the devil. And don't move when you see the storm come. And don't move in the midst of the storm. Stay there and stand there with them and be there for when the storm ends. Whole. Receiving the promise. Father, thank you. Thank you for calling us here. Thank you for being so good. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whoa, we'll see you guys Sunday. And go grab those kiddos. One service, 10 o'clock. Oh, Saturday for Christmas. Yes, downtown. Sign up at the, the thing.